welcome back in the previous lecture we looked at the rate loss involving a decay having more than one pathway so what we are attempting here is a gradual increase in complexity uh, from a simple first order decay to a first order decay involving more than one pathway now uh, we will look at uh, a decay involving many prod, uh, products. Okay, so we'll see uh, how to describe such kind of system. We won't derive this equation, but there's an important uh, equation that you should be aware of because it's um, often used in analysis of uh, nuclear systems. So here, what we are looking at, there is um, a radioactive decay of iodine. Um, via beta decay to a stable product. So in this case, as this element decays, there is an accumulation of a stable daughter product. In this case, this daughter product is stable. Therefore, it does not decay into uh, any other element. But this is often not the case. For example, in this case, uh, the first element has beta decay pathway to this element, that is beta minus decay. And then this element beta decays further to form uh, this element, cerium, right? Uh, so, um, because these are all beta decays, atomic number would change, therefore, Barium becomes lanthanum, lanthanum becomes cerium, but the atomic weight remains the same. So how do you think about this kind of a system? So if you are thinking about the change in lanthanum, the lanthanum can change because of beta decay of barium and the beta decay of lanthanum to cerium, right? So this transition, this reaction is indicated by this term, where N1 refers to the number of barium atom, and lambda 1 refers to this decay constant. So, lambda 2 refers to this reaction, and N2 is just the number of lanthanum atoms. So, if you know lambda 1, lambda 2, we can write this uh, rate law. We can also obtain these lambdas from uh, by certain plots. We'll see uh, such things in the next uh, few lectures. So this can be solved uh, with some little uh, math. Uh, it's not difficult to solve this with some um, conditions. The typical conditions we assume is that at time t equal to zero, there is no lanthanum, there is no cerium. All that exists is barium. So that how is that achieved? You can achieve such a situation via chemical separations. Okay, so um, nuclear science and engineering involves a lot of contributions from chemistry and chemical engineering. Chemical separations are typically done via methods discussed in, let's say, chemical engineering. Okay, so chemical engineering separations um, like solvent extraction, even distillation, all these play an important role in uh, being able to get fewer elements that are radioactive. So there are ways to get such a scenario wherein all you have is N1 naught and N2 naught. That is the concentration of N2 and concentration of N3 at time equal to zero. That's what we mean by N2 naught and N3 naught. That can be zero. With such a condition, you can solve and get this expression. Um, all right. So this is a simple system. You can have more complicated system, right? Let's say when you have uranium series radioactivity, it may lead. It leads to thorium and thorium. Um, there is an uh, isomeric transition, and many uh, products are formed. This is reality, right? You want to be analyzing this. So this is much more complicated than uh, this or the previous situation, right? 
So how do you analyze this? Okay, when you have such a process, your capacity to physically visualize what might be happening is probably limited. So if you want to build a general model um, in this kind of a system, fairly complicated system, uh, typically those who are mathematically inclined are successful. So uh, to illustrate the point here, in the case of radioactivity, the most common equation called the Bateman equation uh, was derived not by a nuclear scientist or an engineer, but by a mathematician in 1910. So what is the condition? The condition is that if you have um, N1 going to N2, N2 going to N3, N3 going to N4, all the way to M, okay, element M, he saw gave a general expression. So the general expression for, for this condition, in the beginning, all you had was element number one, um, the amount of that element was N1 naught. Okay? And then all the rest were equated to zero. And then, so if you want Nm at any particular time, T, you can express Nm. He showed, and you can derive this, this is not too much of an algebra, uh, with certain Laplace transform, uh, it can be derived. Um, if you're interested in this derivation, one of the textbooks that have this derivation is this uh, famous book um, with the title Nuclear Chemical Engineering by uh, Benedict and uh, Pickford. Uh, the second edition has the derivation and there are other books. One is by uh, Glaston also has this um, derivation, if you're so interested. But uh, I'm just presenting a formula which is given in this book also. So the formula, um, this NM involves many constants and also lambdas. Uh, these constants are related to different lambdas via a set of formula, okay? So, C1 is related not only to lambda, but also to uh, the initial amount of element number one, right? So, so here again, how do you get lambdas? Lambdas can be obtained from certain kinds of experiments. We'll see uh, how to do this in simple cases. Um, but there is what the, the takeaway message is that there is a general expression um, to describe this kind of a uh, system derived uh, by Bateman in um, early 1900s. In the next lecture, we will take up uh, another topic. Uh, there are you can classify radioactive equilibrium. Okay, in three broad categories. Uh, we will first elaborate what we mean by equilibria. This is different from what you've probably seen in your chemical reaction engineering or a chemistry class. Uh, we will classify it under three categories and describe some of the behavior in the next lecture. Thank you.